In the exam, it is quite common to have a problem with the oblique impact of two smooth spheres. The standard method involves us resolving the velocities before impact parallel to the line of centres and perpendicular to the line of centres as shown. Since the spheres are smooth, there is no force perpendicular to the line of centres and therefore after the impact, the velocity components will remain unchanged perpendicular to the line of centres. So after the collision, perpendicular to the line of centres, the velocity components are the same as they were before the collision. Parallel to the line of centres, there are an unknown velocity, in this case V1 and V2. So the general method is in the oblique impact of two smooth spheres, we consider parallel to the line of centres, we can apply conservation of linear momentum, and parallel to the line of centres, we can apply Newton's experimental law perpendicular to the line of centres, the velocity before and after impact is unaltered. It is highly recommended in these particular kind of questions that we draw a diagram which shows us the velocities before impact parallel and perpendicular to the line of centres and the velocities after impact parallel and perpendicular to the line of centres. Remember that perpendicular to the line of centres, the velocity is unaltered. Parallel to the line of centres, we can apply conservation of linear momentum and Newton's experimental law, and this gives us two equations involving V1 and V2. Solving the equation simultaneously, we can evaluate V1 and V2 and solve the problem. Once again, it is very strongly recommended that we draw diagrams showing the velocities before and after the impacts parallel and perpendicular to the line of centres. We can then apply conservation of the momentum and Newton's experimental law parallel to the line of centres. Solving the equation simultaneously, we can evaluate the values of V1 and V2. Now we know uh, what V1 is, we can work out the velocity of A both in magnitude and direction. Since we've already worked out the value of V2, we can now work out the velocity of B after the collision, both its magnitude and its direction. Now that we know the velocities of the objects before and after the collisions, we can just work out the total kinetic energy before the collision, the total kinetic energy after the collision, and hence work out the loss in Ke. To work out the impulse, we can work out the change in momentum of either of the spheres. We just need to take care with the direction of the impulse when we're working out the change in momentum.